Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. So I know this video is about half a week late, and for the most part it's because I've been busy again. And uh, just yesterday was my 23rd birthday, so you know, your boy's getting old. <laughs> So that being said, this video is covering my last two days at my senior preceptorship. Uh, for those of you that have been watching me since February, uh, you wouldn't know that I've been doing my senior preceptorship at Washington Hospital in Fremont, California. Uh, I was working in the ICU, CCU, uh, doing pretty much everything that my nurse was doing, but being monitored while doing so. So preceptorships are pretty much uh, a student's first look at what it actually is to be a nurse. Yes, in previous semesters, we're able to do what they call clinicals, which is where we actually work in a hospital and we kind of get acclimated to the flow of the unit. However, with the difference between uh, clinicals and preceptorships is during preceptorships, we actually have to work on our preceptor schedule. So for me, that was overnight 12s, uh, Mondays, possibly Wednesdays and Thursdays or some weeks it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, or some weeks it was Monday, Friday, Saturday. So for the most part, you're doing everything that your preceptor is doing, and you're given a lot more free reign on doing a lot more for yourself. So because of that, you know, I've had a lot of time where I was stressed out because I had to go into the hospital and I had other assignments to do as well, but I'm just happy to be all done. And now for the rest of the semester, I could chill on Mondays and Thursdays, Wednesdays, and I could pretty much have my schedule to myself once again. Overall, this was a great opportunity for me. And I know that I wanted to get into some sort of critical care, ICU, CCU, or ER. And this is what I want to do for the long term. I don't want to get stuck doing med surge. Even though a lot of people say, you know, getting started in med surge isn't really a bad thing because it kind of gets you acclimated to the flow of the unit and you kind of are able to understand what you want to see and how you want to be your own specific kind of nurse. Uh, however, I did have an instructor who passed away earlier this year. Um, when I was with her semester two and semester four, uh, I actually did have her during my last time I was at Washington Hospital and when I logged into Epic this time around uh, she came up as my default co-signer and it made me really really sad that she was gone um, but something that she said to me you know uh, two years ago or no last year during my Washington Hospital rotation was don't get stuck doing med surge. I know that you can do so much for yourself and for others that I wanna see you do more. This is something that she actually wrote down on my, what is it, my final evaluation form, was that she wanted me to do more and not to get stuck doing med surge or even advanced med surge. Because when I was with her last was during our telemetry rotation, which is pretty much an advanced med surge unit. But she knew that I was capable of doing way more than just med surge, so I, I made a deal to myself that I'm going to be shooting for critical care, ICU, or ER, hopefully one day critical care transport, or MICN, or flight, so keeping my fingers crossed. But that being said, Wednesday the 31st of March was my final day on the unit, and you know, it was bittersweet having to leave for the last time in the morning, but I am really happy that I was able to get that experience and, and meet everyone on the unit. You know, my preceptor Margarita, she was amazing to learn from. Yeah, sometimes we butted heads a little bit, but overall it was a great learning experience for me and I feel like I learned a lot from her, just being able to time manage and basic skills here and there, like administering meds through NG tubes, I actually got to place an NG too, which is pretty cool, and, and find out if it was in the right spots, like determining by auscultation if it's in the stomach correctly. Um, I was able to learn about how to place a central line by one of the doctors that had to come in. I got to learn a lot of cool things like bedside cardioversion, bedside CT, uh, a lot of x-ray techs came through because we're actually not able to take some uh, patients to x-ray because they are in such unstable condition that x-ray will actually walk in and do a bedside x-ray, which is pretty cool. But overall, 
you know, I learned so, so much and it's hard to remember off the top of my head everything I've done just because this was such a action-packed experience over the past two months and I'm sad to see it go, but at the same time, I'm, I'm happy for the memories and I know I'll be able to use those skills and they're going to be applicable in the future, especially when I go into the military. However, even though I experienced a lot of highs while doing my rotation and I was able to see a lot of cool things, I also saw a lot of bad things as well. Uh, some things that really did affect me and I feel like will affect me in the long term was the amount of deaths that I saw on the unit. Now again, I know that this is mostly because I was in ICU, CCU, and you know, other people that do preceptorships may not have the similar experience, but something that I saw was daily deaths, or for the most part, almost daily deaths. Uh, sometimes related to COVID, sometimes related to other things as well, you know? We saw a lot of people that had anoxic brain injury from stroke, and families came in, determined that there is no life worth living, that this person is now in a persistent vegetative state, and it would just be easier for them <clears throat> and the family if they just put them on comfort care and let them pass uh, on their own terms or let them pass, what's the term I'm looking for, peacefully. Thinking about it now, I think I've seen maybe four or five people that died from anoxic brain injury from stroke. Uh, I think I've seen like four people pass from uh, from heart attack and about, I think, six or seven people passing from COVID. But, you know, that's what happens when you, when you work in the ICU. You got to expect the worst, but at the same time, be there for the heights and be there for the potential that you can make a difference in someone's life. I know for the most part, there's going to be a lot of downs just because <clears throat> you are working for people in a very critical state and there are the really high chances that someone could turn at an instant so you really have to be there you have to be on top of your shit and you have to to understand body systems in a more persistent manner than just mad surge and i know i like to shit on mad surge but <clears throat> something that my nurse kind of taught me is that in med surge it's a lot more talking to your patient and treating them in a holistic manner whereas in ICU CCU you adopt you do a lot more actual medical work you treat the patient for their actual problem rather than just pushing meds you know you look at data you look at labs you understand body systems a little bit more like you could say um, you know kidney function can be related to something like a CHF or like uh, how do these labs relate to that, such as uh, high amounts of brain natriuretic peptide, which is indicative of, of, of heart failure or heart damage, which can be a marker for fluid overload, which means you need to straight cap a patient or you need to put in a Foley to do a collection see, or do a bladder scan to see how distended someone could be. Uh, you know, and then you gotta look at other things like, oh, well, if we push diuretics, how's their potassium levels, how's their magnesium levels, how, what's their phosphorus look like? You don't want to push someone a little bit too far in one stage and then end up hurting them in the other. Something that I actually learned about is the penum penumbra, which is uh, when some anoxic brain injury occurs. However, it can be reversible. So what the doctors do is they actually push for the patient to be at a semi-state of pseudo hypertension to increase perfusion to the brain following a stroke or following a TIA or something because there is less perfusion to the area and that the brain is now semi-anoxic because of lack of blood flow, uh, they do push for higher blood pressure so they know that blood will be able to perfuse across the barrier into the brain. Um, but you do have to monitor it really carefully using, you know, art lines or or something like that. Uh, and then you have to use balloon pumps to make sure that you're actually perfusing to the, to the carotid arteries. Just things like that, you know, it's a lot more medical than, say, a different unit would see. And, and it's something that I really love to look into and something I really am, um, I'm, I really love seeing. I love being able to help people when they're at their worst state because, you know, when, when a person's in the hospital, it's, it's probably the worst day of their lives. 
and I want to be part of the reason why they're getting better or the part of the reason why they can go home happy and not have to worry about the shit that they had to deal with. All right, everyone, I know that I've talked enough at this time just because I've been kind of rambling on and going off onto alternate topics, but regardless, right now I'm going to put on the video of my last two days at the CSU. I hope you guys like it. And if you do, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video. Hopefully next week, or maybe at the end of this week if I have time. <laughs> Alright, peace. currently 10 15 ish and i know i didn't record anything prior because we had a really fucking busy beginning in the shift uh crazy fucking day uh <laughs> we got uh, a shift report that uh six people died during day shift so we're kind of low on patients but then guess what even more people died just in the past hour I think at nine something, our first patient died, which was uh, on the other pod. She was an older lady, so DNR, DNI. Uh, and then just what, just like 30 minutes ago, um, the guy in my pod, which was uh, just a room down from my patients, he actually passed uh, due to some arrhythmia. Uh, yeah, not fun. At the same time, life happens, and we continue to live on, so uh, I'm gonna eat my sandwich, and I'm gonna try to stay happy and stay healthy, so I don't end up like that. Peace. Hey everyone, so the current time is about 2.40 in the morning. Uh, I know I said earlier that today was a pretty crazy day. And it got worse. Uh, ended up having another person die, so in total three people died on my shift. Uh, six people died during day shift. Pretty crazy day. Uh, and I got to body bag someone for the first time. Not a pretty cool thing to do. Kind of depressing. Especially the guy was 33 years old, so. You kind of live to learn with it, so whatever. Life goes on. And this is my second break, so I'm gonna actually eat my lunch now, even though it's pretty much my breakfast at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. Probably my next time checking in will be at the end of my workday, which is like 7 30 in the morning. But yeah, alright, see you guys then. Alright everyone, so, actually not a bad end to the day. Today was a little stressful at the beginning, but I had a really good end of shift because uh, my patients, they were pretty damn cool. And I really enjoyed talking to them. Even though at the beginning of my shift, I actually was told by the, uh, the person that was coming off, the nurse that was coming off that the patient was a little bit more difficult to work with. So I had like some sort of idea that, or some thought that she was going to be a little restless, but no, she was fine. She was actually really pleasant and, <laughs> you know, I'm really happy that I get patients like her. All right, I'm going to pass security, so I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Peace. <laughs> I actually lied. There's no security today. <laughs> also, it's really cool here, so yeah, I love this building. It's a hospital. It's pretty nice, but I'll see you guys in a bit. Today is my last day on the unit, and I'm honestly really excited. I'm excited to not have to, you know, do overnight 12s anymore, which is quite a hassle. Especially, you know, it takes me about a day or two just to get normal again after a shift like this. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
After today, I'll be at like 162 hours, I believe, which is pretty good. Uh, I only needed 90 hours to complete the Board of Resi Registered Nurses uh, requirements for my graduation. But I ended up doing the full 160 because I didn't want to do additional simulation. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to finishing up today and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. Last time seeing more Simon. on CRRT, which is continuous renal replacement therapy, pretty much dialysis, but a constant dialysis because of it. You know, we have to do a lot of uh, monitoring and we have to like switch out these bags, like just like pretty much every 30, 40 minutes. It's, it's pretty heavy workload, but you know, I learned something new today and I'm really excited that I could actually enter the the medical field with a lot of background in various different things, you know, working in cardiac, working in medical, and just working dialysis, you know, things that I've seen because I work IFT, but now I actually get the hands-on feel of I know how to work a dialysis machine, so it's cool. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys in a bit. in the morning. This is my last break of all time here and honestly I'm really excited to go home and never have to come here again just because I, you know, at first I thought working overnight 12s was going to be fine just because, you know, it wouldn't be as extensive as a workload, but I have a new found respect for, for Grave Shift. This is a lot of work, and you know, when you're sleep deprived, it really starts setting in that you need to be on top of your shit, but at the same time, you can't manage your time as properly as you'd like to, but yeah, I don't know what I'm even saying right now. I am super sleep deprived, I think I got maybe, what, two and a half, three hours of sleep, so I'm really excited to be over. I got about four hours left on the shift and then I get to go home well four and a half what I mean yeah four and a half maybe five-ish hours just because of patient handoff but after that I'm heading home I'm gonna sleep and that's it never come back here again because four years military and then we'll see where I go from there maybe I'll come back to Washington just because it is magnet hospital and you know a lot of these uh, these areas, especially in the Morris Hyman Pavilion, it's really beautiful here, and I do love this hospital. I've been here before, but we'll see. Maybe I'll start off somewhere else, like El Camino or Valley. I really do like El Camino, but 
I don't know. We'll see at that time. But as for now, this is probably going to be my last time working here. Just based on what I think. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to swipe some vanilla pudding from probably Depot and then I'll meet you guys in just a sec. Alright, so since it is my last day, I decided to treat myself. So I got myself some vanilla pudding and some the sugar-free orange uh, jello. I really like the orange one, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go finally take my break since I was talking to people over in Seapod. But yeah, I'll see you guys in probably a little bit. If not, then I guess we'll see you guys in the morning when I'm finally off. But I'll keep you guys involved. Peace. It is 7.43 and I survived my final shift here at the ICU. Wow, today was busy, but just so happy to be done. Um, it's my last day, or it was my last day. Today I'm finally off. And now I'm gonna go home, try to get some sleep. Maybe I'll edit this vlog um, later on today, but no promises because I am beyond exhausted. But you know, regardless of the ups and downs, I, I really appreciated this semester. And what can I say? This is amazing. I was the only person that was ICU, I believe, in my school. So honestly, this was a great experience for me. I'm lucky that I had this opportunity. And I know I'm going to be able to use this experience and, and you know, this knowledge that I've learned here in the future because I do want to do ICU or something along these lines of more critical care. So I'm excited to see where I go from here and I hope to keep you all involved. All right. Well, this is me signing off for this vlog. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I hope you guys, you know, stay safe. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. So I just got to my car and it's kind of setting in now that, it, you know, it is a bittersweet end to my time here at Washington Hospital, especially that this is my last time ever doing clinicals for nursing school. Um, but wow, you know, semester two to semester six, semester two, I was at VMC, semester three, I was at VMC and uh, El Camino semester four, I was at semester four actually semester four I was here on the telemetry unit in semester five I was uh, psych at good Sam and then uh, I did community health for a uh, like a elderly living facility called uh, what was it called Hilltop Manor but wow you know the last three years have been really difficult and I'm just happy I made it this far who knows? I'm, I'm excited to see where my life leads me to next. And, you know, it's it's moments like these where where I really, or, you know, it's it's uh, days like this where I really start doubting myself and, and my ability, but I was able to get through the shift and I'm really happy that I didn't quit or, you know, I, I didn't give up like I thought I would. I'm honestly very proud of myself and, and and I know that I can accomplish things that as long as I put my mind to them because honestly I I didn't know how I was gonna feel today because we were literally keeping alive a corpse but I got through it you know watching the clock just kind of made it worse but once I started just you know focusing on doing what I can to keep this patient alive that's when I started not caring as much <laughs> uh, for the time, but I don't know, now I'm rambling, but I'm just so happy that I made it. I'm so happy that, uh, I don't know, I'm happy that I kind of got like a crazy patient to work on today, like literally keeping a corpse alive of a patient with 
severe, severe septic shock, but I don't know. <laughs> awesome, awesome experiences this this, uh, this preceptor ship, and even though there's you know, all these ups and downs, I wouldn't have traded it in for anything else. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna head home now, so I'll see you guys.